Greetings everyone and welcome to another moveset with commentary. Today we have number 78 which is Han Dong. So let's go! Square in air. Okay, basic as always and triangle. A triangle is not bad, I really like that. Those shenanigans in the air. <laughs> okay, so now square string. Okay, so um, there's certain elegance in his moves, I gotta say. Yeah, you can you can clearly see that this guy has been in a lot of battles and has a lot of practice. Okay, so now dashing square. Okay, not not bad. Now dashing square with square string. Alrighty, now then this triangle looks like this. Okay, and uh, interesting thing, uh, it looks a little bit different when you catch someone with this attack. So let's let's see that. Okay. All right, so this is without catching anyone, and this is when you catch someone. So yeah, you take them on a ride through the air. Pretty cool. Alright, so first special. Yeah, nothing too crazy. Now, uh, second. Second is his first X and I call this Roar. Yeah. Um, so, uh, how does this look without uh, the second uh, triangle? Pretty much the same as the first one. Okay, so now the third one. I call this Blitz because he, he really blitz towards his weapon. Really cool attack, really cool attack. I, I, I mean, it does not do that much, but it's still really cool attack. Uh, you know, it's it's a little things like that that uh, gave him the upper hand uh, when it comes in the fight between yeah to the fight between Han Dang and Lu Su. They are pretty much equals in my opinion, you know, gameplay wise. But yeah, certain little things uh, like, for example, this blitzing attack gave uh, Han Dang the upper hand. So now the fourth one. Really cool attack, really cool attack. I love the spinning motion to his... Was that trident or what? Um, it's called uh, Spring Striker, yeah, that's, that's the name of his weapon. Um, so now, the fifth one is the second X. Okay, so yeah, pretty interesting attack. This is how it looks without the X. Okay, so let's observe it one more time. No, he does not throw his weapon. It's it's a projectile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was always so unclear to me because it's so fast. Um, all right, now then, uh, change of his weapon. So that's pretty sweet. I really like the the fact that he like throws the weapon into the sky. Yeah, as I, as I said, it's uh, those are little things like that that uh, made Han Dang victorious in the duel of Han Dang and Lu Su in my uh, character ranked list. Uh, although Lucius uh, weapon change is also sick, but you know th this is certain finesse to it, yeah. Okay, so now then uh, horse drink. Okay, nothing too crazy and special. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Although, uh, who are you striking with that? <laughs> because you know you're. Uh, Spinning that weapon above everyone else, so yeah, it's more of a style over substance, if you ask me. 
Okay, so now then let's observe uh, the storm rush. Okay, so it's actually pretty normal. Yeah, nothing too crazy. Okay, so this is the storm rush. Counter? Pretty simplistic. So, next we have Musos. Uh, so, first Muso is called uh, Hostile Action. Okay, so this one is pretty boring. Uh, now the second one, the R1 Muso is called Total Gamble. So this is definitely better. Yeah, this is definitely better. Qu quite nice. And now the Air Muso is called Unbridled Rage. Okay, so as you can see, this one is grab, so let's grab someone. Alright, sorcery troops, you're mine. Okay, so suddenly this became really good, yeah. So now, time for the rage art. Okay, so fist and then strike. Yeah, why not? Let's wait for the finisher. Okay, large sweep. So now let's let's see this in action. Let's see the true rage art. All right, so let's go. Oh, and we can see because, you know, there's no crazy crowd around us. So yeah, this is the true rage art. Now, uh, why is Han Dunk so low? Uh, because honestly, he's kind of mediocre. And man, his design is so, oh, so mediocre. He looks like your average uncle. Um, uh, but there, there's a uh, like, funny thing about his personality, that he has this uh, fear that he's like really like average and forgettable. He's, you know, constantly like, oh, I hope that you don't overshadow me uh, on the battlefield and I hope that I will be remembered. And his catchphrase is, you know, my name is Han Dunk, please don't forget it. Uh, so yeah, uh, I wonder what's up with that. Uh, nevertheless, it's it's interesting uh, personality trait. And uh, honestly, it, it suits him well because, yeah, you look at him and he's a really mediocre guy. But yeah, as I said, there a certain move of his, uh, certain moves of his uh, are, are pretty sweet. So yeah, that's that's as I said thousands times. Uh, that's the reason why he's better than Lu Su for me. Uh, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it when it comes to uh, Han Dang. So let's now skip to history lesson. So, Han Dang, a Wu officer and veteran general who served three generations of the Sun family. Wow, that's a lot. He participated in numerous battles, including the Battle of Cherbi, uh, the campaign against Guan Yu, and the Battle of Yiling, uh, playing an important part of the Wu fleet. At Cherbi, he rescued Huang Gai. Uh, that's the guy who's fighting with, like, Boat? <laughs> it looks like a little boat. <laughs> uh, who had fallen overboard after being struck by an arrow. So, yeah. I guess pretty cool and durable guy. I mean, he served three generations of Sun family. So, yeah, he, he knew how to survive. Um, okay, so that's pretty much it. Uh, tell me, what do you think about Han Dang? Uh, do you also feel that he's really mediocre? Although I, I have this feeling that he was like designed to to seem mediocre, but 
in the end, like his mediocrity is actually the the distinguishing trait about him. You're like, oh, it's this, it's this really mediocre guy, you know, and that's the thing about him. He's no longer mediocre because his mediocrity is so apparent that <laughs> that he somehow stands out. He's like, oh, that's the that's the uncle dude. <laughs> Uh, so so yeah, that's that's Han Dang. Uh, yeah, he's kind of low because honestly, I don't like his design. Yeah, so, but I understand that no, um, yeah, that not everyone can be like super uber cool. You know, there's there's need for some variety when you have a character roster that is this huge. I mean, eighty two characters. That's insane. That's insane. I wonder if Sengoku Basara will ever reach this number. Maybe. Like Sengoku Basara 8. There will be like 80 people. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's it. Uh, thank you for your attention and see you next time. So farewell, my friends.